Hi students, for this video, I am going to talk about differentiation rules. And we have the following objectives. Number one, determine the relationship between differentiability and continuity of a function. And number two, apply differentiation rules in computing derivative of algebraic exponential, logarithmic, trigonometric, and inverse trigonometric functions. So on the previous video, Ma'am Ama Bell talks about the, the limit differentiation the limit definition of derivative and that definition of derivative is quite tedious when it comes to finding the derivative of complex functions especially if you have exponential or um, in case already of rational functions applying the limit definition of the derivative is quite tedious already so for this video i'm going to share with you the rules in finding the derivative of a function okay that is applicable for elementary functions so let's get started um, let's talk about the deriv differentiability and continuity of a function and after which we'll proceed with differentiation rules okay so let me start by recalling um, this video about the rules or the conditions for us to say that a function is continuous at a number a that it needs or the function um, should satisfy these three conditions number one it is defined at a meaning um, f of a exists and a is included in the domain of the function second the limit of f exists again the limit of f of x as x approaches a so we have to consider the left hand and right hand limit of the function and number three the limit of f of x as x approaches a is equal to f of a now that you recall these three conditions for the continuity of a function let's go to the theorem that is if function f is differentiable at a then f is continuous at a and when can we say that a function is not differentiable and at the same time not continuous at a so for number one the graph of a function f has corner or kink in it then the function f has no tangent at this point and is not differentiable there number two the function f is discontinuous at a it follows that f is not differentiable at a and this is the contra contrapositive of this theorem Okay, number three, the curve has a vertical tangent line when x equals a, that is the function f is continuous at a and the limit of the absolute value of f prime of x as x approaches a is positive infinity. This means that the tangent line becomes steeper and steeper as x approaches a. So these are the three um, situations for us to say that a function is not differentiable at a number a. Okay, so let us go to another definitions about the differentiability at number a. So a function f is differentiable at a if f prime of a exists. And for the differentiability on an interval, a function f is differentiable on an open interval ab if it is differentiable at every number in the interval. Okay, so let us consider an example to illustrate the differentiability and continuity of a function. So determine if the quadratic function f of x equals x squared plus 5x is differentiable on any number a. So using the limit def definition of the derivative, we have the following solution that is f prime of a is equal to the limit of f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h as h approaches zero so for the next step of our solution we have to substitute here the value of f of a plus h and f of 
a. Since f of x is x squared plus 5x, therefore, for our f of a plus h, that will be a plus h squared plus 5 times a plus h. So, we are evaluating the function at x equals a plus h. And then this becomes a plus h squared plus 5 times a plus h minus, so for our f of a, that will be a squared plus 5a. And let's write it here, a squared plus 5a. Don't forget to enclose that inside the parentheses. Okay, divided by h as h approaches 0. Next, we are going to expand these expressions and we'll see if we can combine some of the terms so that we can easily find the limit of this rational expression. So we'll have a squared plus 2ah plus h squared plus 5a plus 5h and then minus a squared minus 5a divided by h as h approaches zero now combining those similar terms we have a squared minus a squared that is zero also if we are to check for 2ah so there's no other 2ah or ah for this one we'll have to copy that expression or that a term we'll have the limit of 2ah how about 4h squared so wala ding ibang h squared so let's copy h squared plus h squared. Next is for 5a minus 5a, that will be also 0. And lastly, for 5h. So, plus 5h divided by h as h approaches 0. Now, if you're going to observe the numerator of our rational expression, all of them have h. So, let's factor out h in that numerator. We have h times the quantity 2a plus h plus 5 divided by h as h approaches 0. And h divided by h, this will be equal to 1. Thus, f prime of a, let's continue our solution here. f prime of a is equal to the limit of the quantity 2a plus h plus 5 as h approaches 0. And as h approaches 0, this h right here will be equal to 0, right? So this is now the limit of, so in, since we're going to apply the limit law, it is now 2a plus 0 plus 5. And 2a plus 0 plus 5 will give us 2a plus 5. So f prime of a is equal to 2a plus 5. And this is the derivative of the function at a number a. Now, in terms of the differentiability, so we were able to show the derivative of the function at a. And considering that f of x is polynomial function, we know that this is continuous for all real numbers. Thus, a is differentiable and continuous on any number a. Okay? So, we were able to prove or show this one. Okay, how about the second example? Determine if the function below is differentiable for all set of real numbers. So, f of x equals 1 over 3 minus x. Now, um, if we are to determine the derivative of this function for all set of real numbers, by limit definition, we can get f prime of a equals 1 over 3 minus, or the quantity 3 minus a squared. So, students, kindly verify this one. Okay, so students, your task is to verify using the limit definition of derivative. Okay, and afterwards, as I share with you the differentiation rules, I want you to use the differentiation rule that is applicable for this function to check the derivative also. Okay. So, next is, um, 
if we are to identify the domain of the function, domain of f, let's write here, domain of the function f, we have this rational function. So, therefore, for the domain, that is the set of all real numbers, that is, except 3, right? So, yun yung domain ng function natin, nung f. Now, for the domain of f prime, we also have here, domain of f prime, as you can see, we have 3 minus a squared. And same goes with the domain of the derivative. This is also the set of all real numbers except positive 3. And if you're to check for the graph of this function, magkakaroon ka ng whole o kaya naman ng discontinuity at x equals 3. So, that means we can conclude that f is discontinuous at x equals 3 and therefore f or the function f is differentiable only, differentiable in any real number except at 3. So, if we are to check for the differentiability at x equals 1, we'll have a real value for such because f of 1 is equal to 1 over 3 minus 1, that's 1 half. So, f of 1 exists, okay? So, that is for the differentiability and continuity of this function. Now, for example number 3, we have piecewise function, which is f of x equals x squared if x is not equal to 0 and 1 if x is equal to 0. So, determine if f is differentiable at x equals 0. So, using the limit definition of the derivative of the function at 0, we have for our solution, let's write it here, f prime of 0 is equal to the limit of f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 divided by h as h approaches 0. So, as you can see, when I use the limit expression, naglagay na ako ng apostrophe for the function because it denotes that I am already taking the derivative of the function if it, it exists, okay? So, since we have um, f of 0 plus h, this will be um, simplified as the limit of, we have f of h minus our f of zeros, as you can see, if x is 0, f is 1. So again, when x is 0, f is 1. So this will be simply 1 divided by h as h approaches 0. Okay? So since the limiting conditions requires that h approaches 0, without necessarily being equal to 0, it follows that f prime of 0 will be the limit of our f of h and that will be equal to, we're not going to use 1 but instead x squared because again, h only approaches 0, not necessarily equal to 0. So we'll have here x squared or h squared instead minus 1 divided by h as h approaches 0. Now, at this point of our solution, we have to consider the left hand and the right hand limit, especially that we have a piecewise function. So for the right hand limit, it's right here, the right hand limit, that will be the limit of our h squared minus 1 over h as h approaches 0 from the right. And if we are to take the limit of this, so h squared minus 1 divided by h is already in simplest form. Thus, kailangan na lang nating i-observe yung magiging behavior ng function. 
as h approaches zero. So as you can see, as h approaches zero for h squared, what will happen to that value? Okay, di ba? It tends to become zero. So we'll have zero minus one divided by what will happen to h as h approaches zero. Let's say from the right. Okay, and this will be, let's say, 0 from the right and 0 from the right. And if we simplify this, we'll have negative 1 divided by, so 0 from the right, that is, um, it tends to become a small number, but not equal to 0. So let's say, negative 1 divided by 0 0.001. And that will give you, if you're going to check and... um your calculator, and even the graph of this function, that is, um, this will tend to become negative infinity, a negative large number. For the left-hand limit, for the left-hand limit, that is the limit of h squared minus 1 over h as h approaches 0 from the left. So we have... Here, 0 from the left minus 1 over 0 from the left. And observe that 0 from the left as it approaches 0 from the left minus 1, this will simply be equal to negative 1. And divided by, what will happen if negative 1, divide, we divide that by a very small negative number, diba? 0 from the left, those are negative numbers. So, let's say negative 1 divided by 0 0.001. Or negative 1 divided by negative 0 0.001. And negative number over a negative number, that is a positive number. And this positive number is a very large number. Okay? So, as you can see, this left hand and right hand limit are not equal thus this lead us to conclusion that f prime let's use different color to denote the conclusion so this will lead us to conclusion that f prime of x equals the limit of h squared minus one divided by h as h approaches zero does not exist again because the left hand and right hand limit are not equal thus f is not differentiable differentiable at zero okay so that's how we verify for the differentiability and continuity of a function so